Hello guys, welcome to another wonderful episode of CUDA Education. I'm your host, Nicholas Main. Today what I wanted to talk about was debugging in CUDA. Now, in a Windows environment like I have, I, I have um, Visual Studio 2017 Community Edition run with CUDA Toolkit 10 and you know my compute capability is 6.1 and all that good stuff but when you're trying to debug in um, in CUDA you could sort of use all of the tools and techniques that that uh, you know are normally associated with Visual Studio like you could set breakpoints and things of that nature and you know run through code but the, the problem is that the variable information that you normally would get in Visual Studio, it, it won't necessarily appear for the GPU side of things. So it's not going to appear for uh, Thread IDX or Block IDX or Grid Dim or Block Dim or Warp Size or anything like that. Anything that's kind of CUDA specific outside of maybe the stuff that's like um, declared and, and run from the host won't won't show up in the the normal visual studio debugging framework as far as i can tell okay this is you know based on my experience so what we have to do is if you want to debug you have to 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 sort of work around it so um remember that cuda cuda's main purpose is performance so NVIDIA spends a lot of, you know, they've built a lot of tools to figure out performance. So you could use NVProf in the command prompt to actually see the performance of your code. And if I do, so if I go here, so if I go here in NVProf, I'm running this CUDA debugging project, but if I go NVProf CUDA debugging, you know, I'll, I'll get some information about my code, but this is all performance related stuff, right? This is, and then this is the output of the program, but, but this is all performance related stuff. So, um, let's do it again. Right, so this is all performance related stuff, which isn't necessarily debugging, it's just showing you what the performance of different functions is and stuff like that, which is which is helpful. But um, when you talk about debugging, you want to know state, you want to know the status of, of various variables, of various things happening. So, um, <clears throat> you know, NVProf doesn't really help you with that. Um, the other tool the other tool that you could use is uh, Visual Studio Profiler. I mean, not Visual Studio Profile, NVIDIA Visual Profiler. But that again is dealing with performance. So this is just a little preview here of of the profiler, and you get you get um, the time that specific functions are are taking. Uh, I think this one is dynamic parallelism, so it's kernels launched on the GPU from another kernel and stuff. And it will give you some information, but it's not going to be necessarily, uh, this is all the output, but it's not anything necessarily that's dealing with debugging. It's more dealing with performance, right? And of course it will give you suggestions on how to enhance your performance and all that good stuff. Okay. So uh, visuals profiler doesn't really do it. The, the most potent and the most useful thing uh, I have seen to sort of get debug information out of CUDA, um, most potent, the simplest, you know, CUDA education, we like simple around here. Um, the, the, the simplest thing I've, I've seen is just to print whatever variables you need. So this right here is just a simple printf of the thread ID, these are built-in IDs, built-in variables. This is within uh, the default CUDA, um, CUDA code that, that runs when you start a new project in Visual Studio. Remember, I'm, I'm running Visual Studio, I'm, I'm running CUDA Toolkit 9, I mean CUDA Toolkit 10, but it also is the same code for CUDA Toolkit 9. 
but you have all these built-in variables that whenever you're running on the device a function on the device you have access to so you have access to the thread id the block id um, the dimensions of the grid the dimensions of the block and the warp size so if i were to run this code it will pretty much just print out all this information and of course if i don't want to print out everything i could do like um, if block id equals xyz or if block id is greater than a specific number then i can um you know then then i could just limit the amount of output so you see thread zero one two three four blocks zero grid one whatever the dimensions of the block the warp size all that good stuff that basically matches up with this stuff right here okay so uh the the, the printing out stuff is probably the most powerful thing you could do however <laughs> you have to be careful about um using the printf and the, the reason is that if you have a lot of information if you have a lot of information that's being printed out to to the um to the screen and especially if you have a lot of information that's being printed out really fast there is a um there's a printf buffer that sort of stores the information and, and prints it out as fast as it can because sometimes the algorithm will, will run faster than um the algorithm will run faster than it can print it out so it, it sort of saves the information but that creates its own problem because if if too much information is is being pushed to the buffer you will get um overwritten data so the output that you get might be misleading because you're thinking it's one thing but really it's it's newer information or it's older information or it gets all mixed up so whenever you're printing out using printf you have to be careful what you're printing and and know at what point in what state you're you're actually printing it out because it can get really confusing if 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 the buffer is overwritten and if if data is not what you expect or um <clears throat> if if the threads aren't being processed in sequence um always remember in in, in cuda you don't necessarily thread zero doesn't necessarily have to execute first before thread four you could have one zero four three or something in that order so you can't guarantee that the, the order of execution is what you expect so there are a lot of little tricks and and uh things that you have to <clears throat> be careful of so we went through and we went through nvprof we went through visuals visual profiler um we went through printf um the next thing is you could use this assert function here and basically all the assert does is it 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 if if the if the test within the assert is not true it throws it throws an an assertion and it prints it out and it stops processing for that thread and all that stuff now in order to use this assert function it's it's similar to what's in c plus plus right so for you guys in c plus plus who use assert it's basically the same thing just make sure that you add assert.h into your into your, your your code you include it so that this this actually works and right now thread x equals what have you so we didn't get any errors we got zero one two three four so we got five threads one two three four five threads that were printed out no problem okay but i'm gonna do only when thread x equals zero and I'm gonna see what happens. So notice here that thread zero printed fine, okay? So then let's um, rebuild. And notice here now we get all kinds of errors. So we get one, two, three, four errors or four not not even errors sorry four assertions that basically tell you that these four instances didn't run um and <laughs> basically because of this assertion the the whole the whole thing collapsed right so we didn't get our inputs we didn't get our normal even for the other threads we didn't get our normal input everything kind of aborted um these were printed out because 
of course, you know, these are threads going through the same set of code on the device, so they all get printed out. So assert is a is another tool that you can use to sort of um, you know see what's going on or force and force a flag or force an error and things of that nature. Um, if you if you're if you're running CUDA on a Mac or a Linux system, you could use uh, something called um, CUDA dash GDB. Now I don't have a Mac system, I don't have a Linux system, so I really don't know how to use this stuff. But if you do, you could you could Google CUDA dash GDB and it will show you how to get this stuff going how, how to get this um, how to use this stuff to it, it, it there's a host of debug tools that come with this with this command so google it and you know you'll be able to, to figure out how to use that uh, there's also a mem check and race check I'm not too familiar with these, but these are um, these are tools that sort of help you to figure out. These are tools that help you to figure out like uh, memory status and memory state within within the GPU. And you know, of course, the GPU is running so fast and doing so many things. You always want to stay top of stay on top of memory. So these these guys can help you. Um, I'm not too familiar with them at not, at the moment. So I'm not really going to talk about it, but um, let me just type this out. Use this only on Linux and Mac systems. And then other tools that you can use to check memory status, etc. Okay. So that's that, that's that, that's that. Um, <clears throat> all right, guys, so um, I did a little, a little experimenting and I found that you can figure out the size of the buffer by doing CUDA device get limit, doing this command here and you will get the size of the um, the printf buffer okay so this command will print out <coughs> the size of the the printf buffer and that could give you a, a better idea of how so printf size found to be this okay so we'll give you an idea of how much you could fit in the buffer before it it starts to overwrite itself okay so um, I will put in some comments on this um, find out how large the print F buffer is 